Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how I make my cactus and succulent planting mix. Uh, it's really just very basic ingredients, and then I do balance the uh, pH on it uh, some because I use peat moss. Peat moss is the main ingredient that I use in my cactus mix. There are some people that don't like to use peat moss. They'll use coconut core or something like that. Typically, I have two complaints that they'll talk about with peat moss. Number one, it's hard to re-wet when it dries out, and that's very true. It will take a couple waterings if you do let it dry completely out. The other one is, is that it pulls away from the edge of the container when it gets dry. To me, a lot of the questions I get in this business and a lot of the problems I see with all types of plants is watering-related issues. Well, when peat moss dries out, it pulls away from the container a little bit, which is your indicator that it's time to water your cactus, succulents, houseplants, whatever. I actually watch for that shrinkage around the edge of the pot a little bit, and it's my indicator as to when to water. Now, when it does, like I say, when it does dry out, you do have to probably water it two times. I'll typically water it, and you'll see the water just absolutely pour through it the first time, and then if you'll come back to it in a little while and put a little bit more water in it, it'll hold it that second time. But I actually think that it's very helpful to give you some indication as to when to water when you start to see the soil pull away from the inside of that pot just a little bit. The second thing that I use is uh, perlite. I'd actually prefer to use pumice because pumice is similar to perlite in that it lets water just drain directly through it and it's got a little bit of weight to it. That's the reason I prefer to use it, but it can be a little pricey and I can buy these big giant bags of perlite. Um, this is a small bag. If you're making a small amount, um, this is a small bag of peat moss and a small bag of perlite. I'll link these in the description below, but I actually buy these things in four cubic foot bales. If you have a farm supply store near you, you can get the peat moss and the perlite that way, and it's very inexpensive. I think it's about $25 for a four cubic foot bag of perlite, and which I use in propagation, I use in soil mixes, planting mixes, my container vegetables, and so, so on and so forth. Um, it's very handy to have around as a component to use that's very well draining. The third item I use in my soil mix is a sand, and I actually use paver sand because it's a little more coarse. I find that the play sand is really, really too fine, and it'll end up washing out of the bottom of the pot or sometimes floating up to the top of the pot. It just separates itself too easily. So I typically will use this coarse paver sand, and it's $3.68 for a 50-pound bag of it. If you buy washed sand that people recommend for these types of mixes, you know, it's a two pound bag will be five, six, seven, eight dollars, who knows with shipping. But this was $3.68 at the Lowe's up the street. I don't use a lot of this. I'm actually using it for the weight. So instead of using pumice, which has the weight and the drainage component, I'm using the perlite for the drainage and I'm using the sand for the weight. And the reason the weight's important, if you ever grow a cactus or something pretty tall in a small little pot, which succulents and cactus are very good at being able to do that, being able to keep them in small pots and grow them on pretty large. They fall over very easily when it's just peat and perlite and they get dry. That sand, that's really all I'm using it for, is to put a little bit of weight in that pot to keep it from tipping over. The fourth component I use is actually lime. Typically, peat moss has a very low pH, but I'm actually gonna test it. After I do my mix, which is a very simple little formula, and mix it together thoroughly, I have a pH tester. It's also a moisture meter. These things are very, very handy. I'll also link this in the description below, but I'm gonna show you this. I'm actually going to make this soil mix. I'm gonna stick this probe into the soil, find out where my pH is, and then adjust it a little bit with lime. In all likelihood, the pH will be too low after I combine these things together. Espoma makes a really good cactus mix that I'll link in the description below that's a similar formula to mine, and it actually has lime in it, so they've actually thought through the fact that the pH is a little bit too low for the components that are typically mixed together for a cactus mix. I just take a cup, any size, doesn't really matter, and I fill it five times with peat moss. I put that into the bottom of my container, and then I wet that thoroughly. This pot actually has holes in the bottom of it, and I wet it until the water ran out of the bottom of it, and then I mixed it up. So it's wet pretty thoroughly already. From there, I got my five parts peat moss. I'm going to do four parts perlite. Then I'm gonna mix that in thoroughly. Keep in mind when you're working with perlite, it is extremely dusty and you may want to wear a respirator. It can make you cough sometimes. So I like to quickly get it mixed in 
as quick as I can and I just mix it in with my hand. Once you mix it into that wet peat moss, it gets rid of that dust. So I have five parts peat moss, four parts perlite, and I'm just gonna do one part of this paver sand. Just fill the cup all the way to the top and then just mix that in thoroughly as well. I don't want too much of this paver sand. I want it to add a little bit of weight to it, but it does have some water holding ability too that I kind of don't want. So here's the first test of our cactus mix is you want to take a handful, make sure it's thoroughly wet, ball it up, and then open your hand. If it wants to stay in a ball and resist breaking apart, you probably want to add some more perlite to it. And this still is staying a little bit tighter than I'd like to have it. So I'm going to actually add one more part perlite and uh, mix that in and see if I can get it just to fall apart when I open my hand. See, I can squeeze it down tight. And as soon as I open my hand, it starts to open up and spread apart. So I think that's perfect right there. So the next part of this test is these pH meters like this. This is like I say, it's also a moisture meter that you can use to uh, determine if it's time to water house plants, outdoor plants, any kind of plant. As long as you can stick it into non rocky soil, you can use this as a moisture meter anywhere or a pH meter anywhere. But I'll tamp this soil down a little bit and then I'll take this soil probe and just stick it straight down in to where the metal parts at the very bottom of it are covered. Then you have to wait 10 minutes. I'll give you a close up of this. I've got it stuck just down to the bottom of that third metal ring and then you're supposed to tuck it in place and you leave it in there for about 10 minutes. And here's the mix, which is very uh, wet right now and that moisture meter should pick up on that. But it resists clumping together, should drain very well, dry out pretty quickly. But we'll wait the 10 minutes and see where our pH ends up. I want a pH around 6.5, which is slightly acid. And this started around seven and it's dropped down to about 6.2, which wouldn't be bad at all. I probably wouldn't correct that at all. But if it drops below six, I'm definitely going to add a little bit of lime to it. So it's been 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's right around 5.8, which is a little more acid than I'd like to have it. I want it, like I say, right around 6.5. Tomorrow's video will be on why I want this pH up around 6.5. I'll end up linking it at the bottom of this video, but it should be a good follow-up video to why I want this around 6.5. I'm gonna hit the moisture button on the side of this thing and you can see how that reacts. And the it goes from this side to this side when it's measuring moisture. So it's right around 80%. As it moves toward this side over here, that's where it gets drier and you want to think about watering. But any any time that it's on this side of the meter, you're definitely have very moist soil. I am just going to add a light dusting of garden lime to the top of this and then I'm going to mix it in thoroughly and that should be good enough to adjust the pH. Unfortunately, you can't really get a great reading when you add lime initially. It actually takes a little while to break down and start to really change the pH of soil. There are some fast acting limes. I'll link one of those in the description below that probably would register as soon as you mix it into the potting mix as to whether or not you've accomplished the task. But just based on my experience, if I, from 5.8 to 6.5 is not very far to go. And so just a little light feather dusting of this garden lime across the top of it, maybe for this mix that I used using this cup right here, um, I'm guessing that what I just used is probably three or four tablespoons um, would be completely adequate. And then I'll blend this in and I think that should do the trick. But like I say, if I just stick this probe back in there, I actually won't get the ultimate pH from that measurement, but I'll mix it in here thoroughly. So I stuck the probe back in there to see if it's gonna make any difference. And it has climbed slightly above six. So it had some impact on it, but I think it'll have more impact as the line breaks down over some period of time in there. And I don't want to risk going too far and pushing it into alkaline territory. I do wanna keep it on the acid side of the scale. So this is the mix I use to up pot my succulents and cactus. And I found over the years, it works very well. It drains 
readily when I see the peat pull away from the edge of the pot a little bit, usually that's a pretty good indicator that it's time to water them. And then I'll water them pretty thoroughly. And then obviously we go through the entire process of letting them become pretty dry before we water them again and keeping them in a bright place. I'm gonna link all the things I used in the bottom of this video. And I'm also gonna link in the description of this video, a video that I am doing tomorrow on why pH is so important on all of your plants. Thank you for watching, and if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos.